movie tells the real-life story of two brothers who found success in the music industry decades after they recorded an album together. It is called Dreamin' Wild, named after the 1979 album by then-teenagers Donnie and Joe Emerson. Here's a snippet of one of their songs called Baby. Oh, baby. You're so baby. You're so baby. You're so baby. That's a banger. That's, that's some smooth like sounds yeah. right there. The album never made it big, but things started to change in the 2000s when a record collector found Dreamin' Wild in an antique shop of Sometimes all places. Sometimes it happens like oh, no. that. It spread through word of mouth, became an underground hit, and got the reissue treatment in 2012 to a new generation of listeners. Now the movie version of Dreamin' Wild will bring Donnie and Joe's story to an even bigger audience. I was listening to the, the old tapes from Dreamin' Wild, and I was trying to figure out, you know how everyone has been saying it's got this weird magical feel to it? Uh, I couldn't figure out what it was or how to do it. And then I was listening to the tapes and I finally figured it out. It's you. Joining us now is the film's director and writer, Bill Pullett. Hello and welcome to New York Hi. Living. Great to be here. Thank you. This is a treat for us. <clears throat> yes. We are among a legend right now. We're among a legend, and we're, I wonder where you were when you discovered this, this whole story was about to unfold. Well, uh, my office in L.A. Um, <laughs> someone came to you yeah, and said, someone Mr. Came Pullard, in here and you go. Pitched, pitched the story, and I immediately said no, because oh. it sounded like Searching for Sugar Man, that wow. documentary, and mm -hmm. they kind of don't really want to do something over again. Um, but I met Donnie ultimately and the real people, Donnie and Joe, mm -hmm. and just took me in. Changed yeah. your mind. Is that what sold yeah. you, was meeting the two? Yeah, really. Um, actually, we went out to Spokane, and when we were driving around later that night, he just started crying, like telling his story and crying to me. I mean, to have that vulnerability was really what captured me, I guess. Right. So. Because I'm sure you come across so many treatments and so many scripts, yeah. and it was like you said, meeting these two these two youngsters. What about when you heard the song? Well, did that did that change anything for you? Or? I, I don't know if you've listened to it, but I listened to it when I first heard it. I thought I had heard it before, like it's one of those songs that just feels like a classic or whatever, yeah. Yeah. and something that's been in your head. So, I loved it. You, you know. loved it, yeah. Yeah, and, and basically that song. Uh, went through my mind on repeat on um, the Couldn't whole time I was writing the script and wow. shooting. So, Bill it's, it's, making it's, it's He's nice making to have control. like a peel back of the curtain situation yeah. here yeah. To, to, to understand the methods behind the madness, the, yeah. the brilliance, yeah. really. But you also directed the 2014 film Love and Mercy, looks at the life of, of one Brian Wilson from mm -hmm. the Beach Boys. Yeah. So, a musical situation there as well. So, your director. And writer, and as both, how do you approach this, the telling of the story of, of the real life experience of what these people went through? Well, it was, was just meeting them and spending time with them, and then you feel this responsibility. Because ultimately, I wanted to be about, or what I was charmed by was their authenticity. Mm. And, and, you know, they live in a small town in, in Fruitland, Washington. And you just, you don't see characters like that very often in the movies. So I wanted to get that across somehow, you know. I wonder, you know, when it's, when you're doing a, a motion picture about a, a real life story, and we know how the story ends, mm. right? And you go straight to the tragedy first. You don't, sugar, you don't sugarcoat anything. You're not, oh, family that's trying to make things come together. You start right with the tragedy. But as a viewer, when I think, all right, I know how this story is going to end. What, 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 how do you approach that knowing that you know what the ending is. Do you have any tricks up your sleeve? Yeah, Do you I, approach I, it differently? I, I guess I don't consider that the ending. Obviously, you hope that the <laughs> ending, right, right. ending is, you know, when the movie, movie comes out and he gets some success. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but even when he was rediscovered, it wasn't like, oh, Hollywood ending, like, right. you, you know, right. ends up being a superstar. Um, so it wasn't that way. So you're still striving for that, I guess. It's yeah. Not, 
you know. Okay. But it's really about wrestling with all the demons, so to speak. Yeah. Um, that, that of guilt and shame right. that he had because his fa father kind of put up a lot of farm yeah. to make it happen and then lost it all. Yeah. So it's really how does he deal with that guilt and right and the unconditional love of the yeah. dad. It feels like yep. a, a big responsibility <clears throat> that I'm taking for you as the, the teller of that story mm -hmm. on the big screen. And speaking of the big screen, you work with some pretty heavy hitters on this project. We have Zoe De Chanel, I think I saw there, and then yeah. you have Walter Goggins, obviously Casey Affleck. What was that experience like working with those three? Well, it's, I mean, again, it's all about the the subject or the characters you're trying to, and since they, they're they living and they can interact with, right. again, it's that it's all about getting them, the actors, to bring out that side of them that can channel those real people. Yeah. I mean, Were you there when they met? Did you foster that relationship between the real life people and the actors? What was that experience yeah. like? Yeah, I mean, you certainly go through the whole process as far as casting and then ultimately yeah. getting them together. Um, each of them individually was all different, so. Right. Um, but it was great, I mean, Casey, went and visited Donnie the first time unannounced oh. and uh, he said, he just knocked, I'm knocked. here in Spokane. Casey Affleck, yeah. it's me, Casey yeah. Affleck. Let me into your home. Yeah, so that was really what it was like and, and uh, Nancy and, and Donnie were great. They tried not to put on any kind of airs, right. but um, challenging. Yeah. Casey actually uh, put up a tent in their backyard. No, he did not. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he put there. up a tent. Yeah. He wanted to get that into character. He needed yeah, to be there. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, so. What are you hoping people take away from this film other than, oh, I never knew this story and now I do? Yeah, I mean, I, for me, it really is the authenticity of the family. They're just so amazing, giving, generous, and normal or whatever. Yeah. That's what it is. So, like, the way they love each other and support each other, uh, you know, you'd like people to take away some of that from this. I would. I'd like to. Oh. I'd like right. some normalcy. I'd like exactly. a dose of normal. And you know, the authenticity, that's the authenticity for me that you speak so highly of. That's what really, yeah. I feel like, will, will bring us as the viewers to love yeah. them. That's right. You know? Well, Bill, thank you so much thank for you. joining thank us you. today. Good thank luck you. with the film. Come thank back you. and visit. This is your first foray into New York living. I hope it's not your last. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. My son is going here for college. So. Oh, well, well, then you're gonna have. You guys can both come. There's exactly. room. There's room on the couch. Is he cool. studying film? No. Okay, good. Political I, science. I tell oh. my children not to become journalists, so it's 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 a tough one. I don't have to with him. He just goes <laughs> in the opposite direction. There so. we go. And for those of you watching at home, Dream, Dream and Wild is out for release in select theaters tomorrow, August fourth. Rental.